Our honeymoon was around three days. So we went to the coast, came back. <coughs> My dream honeymoon would have been probably a week or two, probably outside the country. Uh, we didn't have enough money for that. Yeah, so we just made deal with what we had. But we are still planning to, <laughs> to, do to have it at some point <laughs> in the near future. Yes, we are still young. Yeah. <laughs> So my dream honeymoon would have been, you know, probably go to Dubai, maybe. Okay, she's the traveler. There's a time she was working for... It was just a bit of travel. Yeah, she worked for some company and they traveled a lot. So she knew all the hotels, she knew all the best beaches. Locally, though. Locally, yeah. even, even, even abroad, because she used to research a lot. Yeah. So I would have loved to go to some of the places she was talking about. Yeah. We booked a hotel. We booked a hotel in Diani, so we went, and the moment we got in, she got a headache. Because <laughs> what was in the photos and what we were seeing there yeah. was not the same thing. So the place was more like an express, uh, it's so not even a hotel, it was like an express, it's, it's somewhere you more take high school thing. students yeah. for a yeah. trip. So she just saw the place like this, and she was like, Curtis, I can't stay here, yeah. I already have a headache. <laughs> so we got onto a tuk-tuk, we started to... You know, just walking around. Oh, yeah. So the place that we actually ended up uh, staying, we, we, we had to do some research while mm. in the coast. It's not what we left here going to. Actually, what I've also so, learned is mm. sometimes it's just good to walk in and see the place before you book it. Mm. Unless now you really have good referrals about yeah, these places. Yeah, yeah. And also you get a better deal. We learned that you get a better deal. If you tell them you're going for honeymoon, there's a probability they'll rip you off. You'll pay more. But if you tell them you're just going for you just, a vacation yeah, you just or a vacation, for a holiday, yeah. there's a probability that you'll just pay kawaida. But now, in the moment you're there and tell them, by the way, you're on a honeymoon, they have no room to start asking for more cash. Honeymoon is also the two of you. You can yeah. also go to the most beautiful place, but you two are disconnected. Yeah. Or go to one of the most simplest places, but honestly, the connection is there. The best weddings, the best honeymoons, the best all of these things, do them together. You know, there's this notion that ah, it's the woman who sorts out the wedding people. It's the... If you can combine your brains together as a couple, you know, so that at the end of the day, you are both experiencing what you wanted. So it's just the honeymoon that I would say that is up to you as a man. You cannot, you cannot ask for advice from your, from your lady. But all these other things come together because, yeah, it's two heads are always better than one. I having been brought up with siblings and then him having grown up as the only child in the family, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of adjustments because I'm like I remember the first time we now got home and then the responsibility of you know you can't take can't have takeouts every day <clears throat> a time has to come where you have to cook I remember <laughs> cooking that day <clears throat> washing the dishes and then the following day it was getting to around 8 p.m. and he was like eh, really what are we having. And I'm like, but I thought I cooked yesterday and washed it. It's a time to do. Because I remember at my home, we used to take turns. <laughs> I'd do this today, and then my sibling will do that tomorrow. And we hadn't communicated. Also, there was a lot of adjustments when it comes to running our family and also setting a family culture. Mm -hmm. And it was a shocker in the beginning, but I mean, <laughs> we learned through it all. I don't know how it was for you. <laughs> I think the biggest issue is communication. <clears throat> Because you see, when two people get married, I have my expectations True. of how I want this marriage to be. And so do you. So the problem comes when we don't talk about those expectations. So me, I'm, I'm just here seated quietly. I want Soila to come in, <laughs> wash my feet, you know, cook for me dinner, do all these things for me because I'm the man of the house. And her, the way she's been brought up, those are things that annoy her in her mind. So if I don't make those expectations... Known. known, there's definitely going to be conflict. And even when you make your expectations known, you have to know the other person may not, is not obligated to fulfill those expectations. So you have to come to a place of, of realizing, okay, what is reasonable mm. for both of us? Him being an artist, you know, his art room, his art staff, there's a way when he's a creative, he just wants to, you have to leave things the way they are. If you go and arrange them, it's going to be war. So... <clears throat> I mean, the adjustment was in the areas of, okay, now this is what, this is how we need to be doing things in this house. If you, there's no living clothes outside the, the laundry basket, you remove socks, you put them back in the laundry basket, there's no living socks in the living room. I mean, those were the adjustments <laughs> that I had to deal with being a woman and also wanting to just put up and have a tidy home. Because yeah. sometimes men can just be men and, and just, they just want to be men, <laughs> how they live by themselves, you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> so there's that. There's the making of bed when you wake up, you have to make the bed. I mean, and then five years later, you see yourself picking up habits that you didn't want <laughs> from him. No, you're the one who was not making the bed. And like, what did I become? <laughs> I have an expectation of my husband, yet I, I didn't communicate it. I know women, we tend to say that he needs to know that I, I need this and that. But yet you didn't communicate. He's not an angel to come and eavesdrop on your thinking or your, or your thoughts and know, oh, my wife needs this and that. Or one day you just walk in, you're tired, don't speak, you don't talk. Yet to expect him to know that you're not okay. It's, it's, it's just good for you. To, I think for us, the most adjustment we had to do and we quarreled about is the communication of expectations. Mm. So I really had to learn that the hard way. Mm. Not the hard way, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. The premarital counseling definitely uh, made the things easier. If we hadn't gone through premarital counseling and now we had this communication issue, it would have been a bit harder for us to figure out how to navigate it. Because now you have the problem, but now you have, you have like a fallback. Okay, this is what we were taught. This is how we learned how to figure these things yeah. out. So, and this is the thing with a lot of premarital uh, counseling topics. They don't necessarily prevent you from going through the issue. They just help you know how to navigate once the issue comes. Yeah. I need to go to the salon, but yet we are sleeping hungry in the house, you know? So there has to be adjustments when it comes to finances. I am for our money is, is our money. Whether mine or yours, it's still our money. This marriage, the vision in this marriage, is it my vision or is it our vision? Because, you know, money always follows vision. So if the vision in this marriage is my vision, that means you will not benefit. True. But if it's our vision and we are all headed the same direction, then all our money should be geared towards the same vision. And I remember there was a time I lost my job and she still she had a job at the time. And it's those moments where things are just not working. You're sending CVs, nobody's calling you. You're starting business, things are just not working. So I was just there. I was trying, but I had no income whatsoever. So Soila gets her salary. This, this, it was the first month where things were thick. She gets her salary, and then she comes home and tells me, ah, so Curtis, uh, here is the salary, so I'm giving you as the man to, to decide what we are going to do. And I was like, okay, that was, uh, that was nice. So I took the money, we, we budgeted it with her, we said this will sort, this will sort, that. And she was like, okay. She didn't even take something for herself and say this is going to be mine. She just gave me the entire money. So she goes ahead and asks, um, can, I, can I ask for about 4K out of this money? So me, I was like, yeah, I mean, it's, you earned it. You can have it. There's no problem. So I'm thinking she's asking for money to go do something with her hair or something like that. Kumbe, she had already known that my birthday was coming like a month, a month after. So she was, she was planning on not to buy for my gift with that money. So I just saw that, and you know, you learn these things in premarital class, but now when it's happening practically, it hits you differently. And I was like, wow, this woman actually, she's actually for us. So when I saw that, it, if there was any doubt in my heart for me to ever provide for her or help her in anything, it left. And that's why I usually tell people, I have no problem cooking for her. Because I've, I saw that. I saw the point where she sacrificed everything she earned and brought it to me. Our hardest year was towards, um, I think, the third year. Yeah. When now we were trying to get pregnant yeah. and we just kept on having one miscarriage yeah. after another. Yeah. That was a rough year. When it comes to health issues, health issues are very sensitive. It's not just something you decide, ah, to, tomorrow we are going to be okay. It's something that has to take its mm. due process. So that was a bit heavy for us because initially when we got pregnant the first time, we weren't planning to. It just happened. So we learned we were pregnant and we were like, oh, okay, we weren't planning to, but now we are here, let's just embrace it. And then we had the first miscarriage. Now when we had the miscarriage, we were like, okay, now we really want to get <laughs> pregnant. So we got pregnant the second time, we had another miscarriage. So it was beginning to be like, okay, could there be an underlying issue that we probably don't know? Because, you know, doc, med medicine says the first miscarriage happens by chance, and it happens a lot. But now the moment it happens the second time, you begin to get concerned. And then it happened the third time. The third time was actually so serious. She, was, she we had to go to hospital. Mm. She had to be done surgery and all that. Mm. Now that really, really hit us. 
So it was a really big uh, challenge. We didn't know how to go about it because even the doctors were like, hey, we, we don't know what's happening. We mm. can't tell because your system looks okay. You know, some, it, it's easier when you are told this is the problem because yeah. you can easily tackle it. But when you are told this, we can't see any issue, but here the result is something different. It was a bit hard. We had a lot of uh, mental issues to, to sort out. Mm. Depression checked in for some time there. Uh, but eventually, the next year after now is when we got pregnant again with our firstborn child. Which, if you've gone through three miscarriages, even this one that is okay, you are still, really you know, <laughs> she would feel, you know, like a cramp pain and, and yeah. she goes like, hey! And I'm like, okay, it's happening again, you know. <laughs> and as you were saying, saying, my first trimester, I was very fearful because, I mean, all these things have been happening first into going into second trimester. I was like, oh, is this going to happen? Or is it not going to happen? You know, every small discomfort makes you be fearful. And then by the time, you know, like, okay, now we are at 20 weeks. Oh, wow, halfway there. Oh, now we are at 38. Oh, my goodness, we are there. So <laughs> it was very, very interesting because I honestly didn't believe I could go through the, the full term because of what I experienced before. So for me, it was a miracle. And just giving birth naturally and everything. Our son is now 15 months old. Mm. And it's just a joy, honestly, to have him. And remembering the journey to being parents, I mean, the entire process, <clears throat> I can say also because how our first two years of marriage was, because now these challenges hit us at the third year, really solidified us. Because it's so easy for that kind of challenge to separate couples. But if anything, what happened for us, we became more strong and our foundation became more solidified. We were there for each other throughout. He said, there are moments of depression where you now question yourself. Is there anything wrong with me? Um, why can't I carry a child, you know, is this, is this now meant to be me? <clears throat> Not that a child is everything. Whether you have a child or don't have a child, I mean, a marriage is still viable. You still have each other. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that somebody who has a, ma a child is more important than a couple who don't have a child, you know. So, <clears throat> not to say that uh, those ones that have children are more important or their marriage is now valid. No, 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 no. But for us, we really desired to have children. So the first two years of our marriage really solidified us. And I think it was just God preparing us for the challenge that was just coming to face us in the third year of marriage. And now being parents, I mean, it's, it's, it's a joy. It's a joy. And we treasure him more because also Cause of, of the, the, journey yeah, the journey to getting him. Yeah. So, yeah. There's a time after the third miscarriage, she asked me, she, we were just seated a few days after the experience, and she asked me, Kat, is, is it normal to desire death? And I was like, okay, <laughs> now we are, we are now dealing with this thing. And that's when I realized we really need to get some sort of counseling. Because now, you know, most, most of the time people desire death as an escape to the problem they are facing. The mental pressure is so much, and death looks like the way out. And sometimes that's an indicator of depression. And so sometimes it becomes even suicidal. So you need to, for us, we realize we need to get this thing sorted out. We need to shift our mind. We need to get to the place of realizing that in as much as we've experienced this, this doesn't necessarily define, just as she said, doesn't define our value as people or as a married couple. So we talked to a few people. We talked to one of our pastors who also does counseling. So I think for us that was very beneficial because we got help from a perspective that is um, spiritual as well as uh, natural, if I may say, professional. professional. By the time I was asking that question, it's because I couldn't answer most of the question that was already I had. I'm like, why do I have to go through this? Yet the doctors are saying there's, there's, no, there's, no, in, there's, there's no indication of any wrong thing with your system. You know, and I'm like... Again, questioning God, you know, I mean, I serve you, God, you know, you are what's happening to me. Um, <clears throat> why don't I have an answer? I mean, there was a lot of things happening. Yes, going through the, med getting the medications again. You know, every time you take this dawah, they remind you of what you went through or what you're trying to, 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 to deal with. So the uncertainty of things themselves just put me at a corner of, not really knowing what's ahead, what's lying ahead. Um, I remember he actually did take a lot of effort because he'd ask me, let's say, after every three hours, how are you feeling? 
or even at the end of the day, how are you feeling? And I remember even I had forgotten about him. I didn't have time to ask him because he's also going through the same thing. I mean, it's a loss for the both of us, not just the woman who's lost. He's also lost. But I, I had completely, I was in a different space whereby after coming out of it, I was like, wow, who was actually helping you out? Who was, who was asking you these questions? How are you dealing with it? Because I remember now him, he had to dive into work, I think to also mask it because, I mean, he has a wife to try and help um, put her together because I was in a different space. So, I mean, just having him asking me this question every morning, every evening, in the middle of the day, how are you feeling? Uh, what's in your mind? And I'd say nothing, because I had nothing. I was in a zombie kind of mood. And that's when now the thoughts of probably death is the best thing, you know? What else do I have to give? If this one thing, and I don't know, I honestly don't know how depression hits people. It's something that I never thought I'd experience. And then again, it was right there on my couch. I remember even getting this new doctor, mm. it's the mom, because she's in the medical, she, she's been in the medical industry mm. for a while, so she has a few colleagues here and there, and she knew the right doctor to direct us to, and she's like, I'm, guide, I'm going to refer you guys to this person, I know he's very good at what he does, mm. and honestly speaking, that doctor has been helpful, even how he handled us from the beginning, it was like, I think this guy knows what he's doing, I even feel safer, being with him and being pregnant and going through the entire journey with him, it actually felt safer. He knew what he was doing. And I'm like, I'm actually very comfortable. I don't think I would have been comfortable with the other doctor that I had initially because of also how I was handled. So he was very professional. He knows his stuff. I, I think he's used to having special difficult, cases. difficult pregnancies yeah. or special cases of women with reproductive health issues. So... God sent, let me just say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so our parents are really involved. I remember my mother just gone, her, having her fellow women praying for us. Uh, his mom as well, women praying for us. And it was just having close people who know still covering us in various ways that they could. Mm -hmm. It's not a fancy information to share around. So they also covered us in that area. Because I know there are many aunties who didn't know. Mm -hmm. Because they're imagining just facing people and they know your hardest season and just because they have an information, you, know, you feel kind of exposed and vulnerable. But they had a way of covering us, despite the challenges that we went through. They were really, really there for us. We felt the warmth of family and friends. So here we've gotten our first baby boy. We are so happy. He's a lovely child. Until he starts waking up every two hours. With the <laughs> loudest cry in the universe. <laughs> and here, here, here we are both tired. So Soela feels like I should change the diaper. But I'm like, no, you change the diaper. <laughs> You wake up at night. No, I'm, I'm breastfeeding. You wake up at night. So we fought a lot because yeah. we, we, we didn't see that coming. Yeah. You see, marriage, you have, you have years, including premarital class, to prepare you. Parenthood, not so much. You learn on the job. Yeah. So it was, it was, it was an interesting time. It was, a, it was a learning yeah. curve. I mean, it was, as we were saying, we had to know. I mean, he's my, he's my child. He's also your child. Yeah. I have to take responsibility. Yeah. I'm the mother. I'm the one. He's always on my boobs breastfeeding. I need a break. You take your son, you mm. know. I need time to sleep, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I have not slept. I mean, we had to. I remember, we normally do have like our monthly marriage uh, <coughs> thing where we meet. And just the two of us and just say, where are we? And as far as vision, be Shara, how's the health of our marriage? You know, we normally do that. But now when we got a child, we had to do it weekly. Because I mean, we were on each other's hairs every day. We're like, you, you didn't support me today. I mean, the baby is crying. Why are you expecting me to go pick the child? So we had to do that every single evening so we can be sane people and just know how to support each other. Because this is a child, they mm. need you. You know, so I had to tell him I didn't like how you handled me today or how you, you, you didn't really come through when the baby was crying and I needed your help. Um, and also him saying, I loved how you probably handled our son today or how you went about doing one, two, three today. Mm. So it was really just ha us encouraging each other and um, mm. <clears throat> amplifying the good things that the person did during the day mm. and also trying to correct something wrong that they did during the day yeah. so that tomorrow we'll do it better because having a newborn year, that was, mm. <laughs> that was a challenge for us. <laughs> it was a lot of work. Yeah, what, what worked in our favor also is... Uh, I, I know COVID has, oh, yeah, uh, has made COVID a lot of... It, it's a mess. But I think when now people had to work from home, I think for us that was really helpful yeah. because I realized 
that was a fight we needed to have. Mm. The fight for being new parents. We needed to have it because, you know, sometimes you need to understand that you're fighting for peace. <laughs> you're fighting so that you have peace. And for us, it helped us because there's this new book I started reading and it was just talking about the importance of kids growing with parents around them. And I realized, ah, so this is good. This is, we needed to fight so that we learn how to help each other for the sake of the child. Mm. So for me, I, I enjoyed, I think it was a necessary fight and I appreciate it because I see what it has done. Mm. Yeah, uh, there are certain things we just look at our son and we are like, wow, this is because we were both present. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it was a good time. Uh, yes. Still is a good time. Still is. Still is. <laughs>